Good morning, it's Michael Lipinski again. Good morning. I uh, hate to persist, but uh, back to uh, mastering Revit architecture, um, user interface, and we discussed the last uh, class that uh, I introduced uh, datum elements, and I had taken a look back at the video, and I had looked at the, uh, the, um, the manual, the calibration manual, and I, I thought it would be prudent to go back over it again. Uh, I, it's a powerful aspect of it, and I wanted to uh, to get a little more into it for you. All right, so um, one thing I should have probably told you sooner, but it's not too late, is that um, this particular uh, methodology of instruction is available to anyone. Um, as a matter of fact, you'll need it if indeed you want to follow along either in a classroom environment or if you want to follow along in a, an online a web portal environment, cloud-based instruction. Um, so, with that being said, um, it's real simple, actually. If uh, we look to um, the publisher, if we look to the publisher, we'll be able to, um, to, be able to uh, get, a, get what we need. So, uh, there's a website here that um, has all the information that you're going to need. All right, so here it is. This is the this is the manual. It's uh, by Wiley Publishing, and uh, it's available online. This is the uh, the universal resource locator up here. Uh, you can Google it or Bing it. You'll find it. In any event, you can purchase it. Um, and what you'll need to understand is that as you're Working through the text, um, you'll be asked to utilize um, downloadable project template files or examples. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you'll notice that this book is broke up into chapters, obviously. And we're not going to go through all these right now, but we have a lot to get to. So if we just, let's just get a quick overview. I'm going to get to the top here real quick. And look at the table of contents, and we'll go through it slow. But we're going to get to this. There's a lot to cover. This is all-encompassing. So, as you can see, we're, we're moving along. We're moving along. Uh, whether we'll get through this uh, or what, whether we won't, we get to be seen. This, this epidemic is pretty bad. It's biblical. So, um, let's not go off on a tangent. If you go all the way down, you'll notice, well, here are the chapter pro project exercise files. So we're going to be working within, uh, we're still in Chapter 2. So if you go and you download it, you'll be able to download the zip file. And I would just download it to maybe your downloads directory, extract it, delete the zip uh, capsule, the compression, uh, delete the compressor, and leave the extracted uh, abstract to utilize as an example during the tutorial. Um, and if you look, You'll see that. That's what I did. I saved it to my downloads directory. I extracted it. And um, it's in there. So, um, so here it is. This is the uh, chapter two, uh, introducing data objects. And it, this is really important. I always flew through it yesterday, but I wanted to just give you some quick um, Revit accelerator tips that I picked up along the way. And if you follow those, if you can, I'm not sure if you can, but if you can, you'll see that there are some shortcuts that could clep you out, uh, cliff notes, if you will. Cliff notes. But we have a lot to cover in a short period of time. My kids can be waking up soon, and it's Uber City. Maybe I'll just ignore them all day. Anyway, introducing data elements again. Data, plural, are sometimes referred to in Revit as datum objects and consist of references, grids, and levels. Datum objects establish geometric behavior by controlling the location and extent of your content, the building, the stuff that goes in the building, and the stuff that you need to document your building. Reference planes can be created in any 2D view from the main ribbon tabs, and we'll get into reference planes after grids and levels. Architecture, structure, and systems. So if, if you're looking to find the reference planes, as you can see, if you go to the architectural tab, here, here's your reference planes. Creates a reference plane. 
go to the structural tab, you can create a reference plane. Go to the steel reference plane, systems reference plane. So from you can access the reference plane tool from uh, any of the tabs that I just mentioned. Now, again, what does it do? It it's the shortcut key is RP, and it creates a reference plane using drawing tools. In the drawing area, sketch a line to define the new reference plane, and that's going to be very important down the road, especially when we start creating new customized families and constraining um, the model and or the entities and elements within it, the components within it. And then that's what we're going to be doing with the grids and levels as well to a certain extent. Um, now, um, this will allow you to work with respect to the desired work plane. Grids are used to locate structural elements in your project. You are not required to include grids in your project, but they are quite useful in managing structural walls and columns. Like reference planes, grid lines can be added to any 2D view. Keep in mind that grids can be perpendicular only to levels. Therefore, for, uh, furthermore, grids are, only, uh, grids are visible only in views that are perpendicular to the grid. So if the grid is in a north-south orientation, you'll be able to see it in only in plan and from the east-west orientation. Levels are datum objects that are parallel to the ground plane. They serve several purposes. First, they are the main method for placing and managing the elevation or the z-location. The right-hand rule, the z-location, x, x, y, z. Again, again, levels are datum objects that are parallel to the ground plane. They serve several purposes. First, they are the main method for placing and managing the z-elevation or uh, managing the elevation or z-location of content. Virtually all content placed in a Revit model has a level parameter. You can even move objects from one level, level to another simply by changing the property in the properties palette, being that a lot of these objects are hosted by a lot of these um, components and objects. Uh, levels are also contain also function as constraints for objects, such as walls and columns. These objects have top and bottom constraints that can be set to levels so that they will automatically update if the levels are adjusted. Levels may be seen and created only in elevation and section views. Therefore, you can't create levels in plan view and they can't be diagonal to the ground plane. Creating any datum is easy. Simply select the desired tool from the architectural tab and then pick two points to decide, decide to find the start and end locations. Despite their two-dimensional appearance, all datum objects have three-dimensional extents that help you manage their appearance throughout a project. You'll explore this further in this section explaining 3D and 2D datum elements later in this chapter. Creating and duplicating levels. In the previous section, we discussed the overall purpose of data uh, objects. However, there are special conditions related to the creation of levels. First, you should understand that a level does not always require an associated plan view. Levels that have plan views will have a blue graphic symbol at the end. Double-click it to go to that view, whereas those that don't will have a black graphic symbol. The blue represents hyperlinked data, which you can find on levels, section, heads, and other annotations. When you create a new level, you have the option to create a corresponding plan view by using the Make Plan View option from the Options bar. Copying an existing level will not create the corresponding plan views. This is useful if you are working on a larger project such as a high-rise and you want to quickly configure multiple levels without creating them one at a time. You might also want to use levels just as a, re a reference for content, but not for specific plans such as for an intermediate landing or mezzanine. Although it is it's easy to create many levels by coping uh, or arraying, only create the levels that are necessary to manage major parts of your project and that needs to be shown in your documentation. You do not need to create a level for every slab, stair, or roof or, uh, or floor offset as objects can be shifted in the z-direction offset for any level. Base points, benchmarks. Too many levels can have a negative impact on your projects and your performance as they take resources to manage. Let's explore the creation and duplication of levels with an exercise. First, download and open the file c02-levels-start.rvt or c02-levels-start-metric.rvt. 
from this book's webpage at www.cybex.com forward slash go forward slash mastering Revit 2018, then follow these steps. Open the exercise file and make sure the project browser is open. Remember that it may be in a tabbed palette with properties or with system browser like I have it set up on my workstation. This workstation, Adco's workstation. They said I could have it instead of my last week of pay. <laughs> All right, so I took the laptop instead. It's called Davy and Goliath. I don't know. Whatever. All right, so not to get silly. It was an interesting endeavor over there with uh, Adco. Nice shop, really nice shop. Met a bunch of nice folks, a bunch of assholes too, but they, they didn't stick around long. In any event, <laughs> let them know, my manager told me. I'm not going to tell you who he is. Anyway, so, um, yeah, yeah, um, you have to get this, this open. And I know from past experience, it'll take 10 to 15 minutes if you're a newbie. Um, and I have the patience of a saint, so we could wait. You, know, you wait, and, and you, you demonstrate some patience because, again, um, a Patek Philippe, you don't own one. You would merely take care of it for the next generation. And... Over the course of my life, through my trials and tribulations, I have acquired one skill that I can profess to have better than most other skills that I possess. One of my strong points is that I do have patience. And you have to, because I realize I can do this. <laughs> and I have. Um, actions speak louder than words. Make it happen, they say. And um, you will. If you put in the effort, if you put in the effort, you will. So, again, in a lab instruction, we, we, we would have um, some assistance that could help us along the way with configuring these these workstations. If indeed it's a an instruction that's deployed in an instruction environment, a lecture lab, hotel lobby, uh, multi-purpose room. Uh, again, the instruction we could deploy with laptops, overhead projectors. And we could sit in a conference room and we could do this face to face. <laughs> Bring food and teeth. <laughs> Bring me a set of teeth. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that. I'm working on it. It is everything. All right, so the beauty is only skin deep. Architecture is also about facades. Google superficial, you don't understand what that means. I don't have to tell anybody about that. Anybody who knows anything about anything knows a false facade when they see one. Now, this isn't one of those. So, uh, if you're interested, follow, I suggest you follow along. Um, because again, I'm going to give you the opportunity that was denied me. Because I don't have an axe to grind. In any event, let's explore more. Let's explore the creation duplication of levels and with an exercise. So I've got it open and I've opened the C2 levels metric because I said it wasn't going to yesterday. Now, um, make sure the project browser is open, which it is. Remember that it may be in a tabbed palette like it just so happens to be. I have it in a tabbed palette with systems browser to save some space. You can combine all three of these palettes, properties, systems browser, and properties browser, project browser, into one palette and tab the palettes to save space on your canvas. That's the, it's persistence in tools, persistence in the reciprocating saw. Okay, so we have that open. We have the project browser open. As you can see, it's to the splash screen in the drafting view detail called start. And this is what we have. We have some text here. And we're talking about the user interface and levels and grids and reference planes. So now, expand the views tree and then expand elevations. You'll notice that there is, um, if we double click the south to activate that view in the drawing area, you will see two levels that are usually present when you create a new project using the default template. From the architecture tab, in the ribbon, find the datum panel and click the level tool. But before you do that, let's again look at it. Adds a level to the model use a section view or an elevation view when adding levels. You can create associated plan views, 
Levels are visible in 3D views and views that intersect the level boundaries or the extents. It's important. And well, there's the datum panel. You can rip it out here if you want to put it there or bring it back if you remember. Well, there's the level panel. The shortcut key is LL. The language of love. Uh, okay, so it is saying that we should invoke the datum command. Um, and we will do that. So we are going to invoke the level command and look at the options part because the next series of instructions says from the architectural tab in the ribbon, find the data panel and click the level tool. In the options bar, ensure that the make plan view option is selected. And it is. Make plan view. We can, we're going to get into this eventually. But um, I want to stick to our plan. There's lots more we could do with this. There's lots more. And we're going to get to it. So we're, we're prepared to, to, to invoke the, the tool. And again, I said you have to pick two points. So if you stop start from the opposite side of the existing data bubble and you hover over the end of any of these levels, you'll notice that you're going to get a grip. As you hover near it, you're going to get a magnetic grip as well as an extension line so that you're parallel and perpendicular to the line below. Uh oh. So if you hover over it and then you click and drag your mouse up, oops, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Let me do it again. Level, pick. Wait, what, what, what did I do wrong here? Uh, level. Uh, when you hover the mouse point anywhere near the either endpoint of the existing levels, you will see alignment to help you. Uh, that help keep the extents of the datum objects consistent. I'm sorry. Let's do that again. Level, hover over, don't click. Just hover over and dynamically snap. I'm sorry. Um, dynamically snap, uh, running object snap. So we're in metric. We're in, we're in a metric system now. So as you, uh, and I'll do it again since I uh, slowed you down. I'm going to hit escape a few times to get out of the command. And I'm going to go to level again. I'm going to drag my mouse slowly. Notice that when I approach the level, I'm already having um, a benchmark available to my base point, absolutely from this level, or relative to this level. Not absolutely from zero, but relative to this, le to this level. So if I hover over it without, without clicking, and I just orthographically point my cursor in this direction, it'll stay orientated to 90 degrees right angle. Now I can manually just type in what it's asking me to say. It's saying from right to left, draw a new level exactly 10 feet or 300 millimeters, uh, 3,000 millimeters above level 2. Right now it's at 2,300. I could drag it up manually up to 3,000 with my mouse very, very gingerly. Or I could manually type it in. Now, one of the benefits of knowing um, conversion, converting metric to imperial units is that uh, you have to put in the, the um, the suffix, uh, the foot inch suffix. Um, we're going to get to uh, entering units and, and, land, and manipulating units. There's lots of units, lots of units of measurements, columns, joules, siemens, farads, teslas, all those things. Um, newtons. There are lots of newtons. All right. So understand that I could also just be in that being within the context of the command without even picking. Um, my left mouse button, just type in 3,000. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to enter the point, it's going to enter the coordinate, it, the Y coordinate right at that location. And now I'm slowly dragging it over. An extension line or running object snap dynamic um, snap is going to appear. And then I'll be exactly in line with the two previous datum uh, bubbles. And then you click. And you'll notice a lot of stuff just happened. And we're going to pause there for a second. And we'll read what I just did again so that you can digest it from left to right, draw a new level exactly 10 feet or 300, 3,000 millimeters above level 2. When you hover the mouse pointer anywhere near the end point, where ne when you hover the mouse pointer anywhere near either end point of the existing levels, you will see alignment guides, dashed lines, that help keep the extents of the datum objects consistent. Click the Modify button or press the Escape key, and you will notice that the new level has a blue target. 
double click the target for level three and the level three floor plan will open. Now, that didn't happen. It did happen, I'm sorry, it did happen. Because if we would have done it differently, we wouldn't have got the blue target. So, what it's saying is, um, click the modify button or press the escape key, you'll notice that the new level has a blue target. Uh, double click the target for level three and the level three floor plan will open. Because when we invoke the command, we said make plan view, uh, make make a plan view in the context of doing this, and and it's exactly oops, that's exactly what it did, and not only did it create this level in the floor plan, it created it for the ceiling in the um, for the ceiling plan as well, um, and if you also notice, it did the same thing for structural plans, but it didn't have one for floor plan level one and level two yet. Um, we haven't done, we haven't created it, but we can. And we're not going to do that yet, but. It did automatically create that. That's important. Now, um, click the of blah, blah, blah. Double click the target for level three, and the level three floor plan will open. So this target, double click that, and you'll notice the level three floor plan will open. And I'm running out of space. And as you can see, you'll have some LV, uh, you'll have some data, uh, more data elements, <laughs> which have parameters, uh, the building elevation uh, parameter. And this can get very, very tricky. Very tricky, this particular uh, clipping tool. And we're going to get to that. So, return to the south elevation view. Double, I'm going to double click my wheel button. And select level three. From the modify tab in the ribbon, click the copy tool. In the options bar, select a multiple option. So, it's saying in the click to modify. And, and, and there it is. So if you select the level, if you notice the modify contextual tab opens up and then within the options bar, you'll see that um, below it that there are properties for this level, as you can see. So now in the options bar, select the multiple options. Now what it's asking us to do is to select this and in the modify, go to copy. Select the modify option. And before we do that, let's watch the tool. Copy selected elements and places them in the specified location in the current view. Modify panel copy is different from clipboard panel copy. Use modify panel copy when you want to copy selected elements and place them immediately in the same view. Use clipboard panel copy, for example, when you need to switch views or projects before placing the copied elements. And that's another important aspect of what we're going to get to that's really important, very powerful, the copy and paste in this particular platform because there are paste options. So now, it's saying just copy this level up. So I selected it. It's highlighted, as you can see. And then here's the copy tool. CO is the shortcut. So now, as you can see, an all-encompassing box comes around. You'll have some grips. You'll be able to grip this selected item anywhere along with this small temporary um, cursor that you see here um, fine, following yours almost like a heads-up display it's object tracking object snap tracking um, you could actually go to certain points on the, the uh, element and you'll be able to grab it and in this case we can grab it right from the end and make sure that multiples on there we're not going to talk about the disjoint uh, constraint yet but it's saying click it and then get it up in the Z in the Y direction because we're in a X Y environment. We're not we're, Z is coming at us and going away from us in this particular aspect, this perspective, this aspect ratio. So we now we have this in our hands. We 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 did we grabbed it and we're going to copy. It. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hit escape a couple times. I'm going to drag. I'm going to actually pick right now with my left mouse button. And you'll notice that if I hold down the left mouse button and drag from the right to the left to the right, and if I encompass this entire element, I'll be able to select it. Now, if you also notice, if you select a box from the right to the left, it's hidden because it only will touch, it'll only grab anything that's touching and select it. Again, without invoking any command whatsoever, you can click 
and create an all-encompassing box that will only select what's encompassed within the box by dragging from left to right. By dragging from right to left, it has to be touching it. So it won't, all you have to do is uh, touch it and you'll get it. And now you have all three selected. If you look in the object filter in the lower right hand corner, you'll see that there are three levels selected. You can filter out whatever you want. I can filter out all of them and have nothing selected. And now nothing's selected. But what it's saying is select level three and the modify levels command will and then you, uh, ribbon will pop up. And you copy by hitting the copy command. And you click, and you find the base point, and you click, and you get it to the direction you want, orthographically in the Y direction, without deviating from making sure it's square. And it's saying, create two copies of the level, level three, one that is two feet or 600 millimeters above level three, and one that is nine feet or 2,700 millimeters above that one is shown in figure 2.24, which I'm drawing as we go. So here's the one that is 600 millimeters. And it's going to base the next dimension from the one you just created relative to level four, not absolutely relative to level three, nor absolutely relative, or absolutely relative to level one zero comma zero comma zero it's going to use its last known address and that's exactly what it's doing as you can see it's basing now your uh your ruler at zero uh, at the level now at level four and now we want to add it into 2700 millimeters so now we're 2700 millimeters above level four not 2700 millimeters above level three Okay, so we've, we've been able to accomplish that. And you can change the names and elevations of levels by selecting a level and then clicking the name or the elevation value. Rename level 3 to level 2B, level 4 to level 3, and level 5 to level roof. If you are prompted to rename the corresponding views, click yes. So what that's saying is that you can actually select a level and you can rename it. So to rename level 3 to level 2B, if we go to level 3, as you can see, it's, it's all convoluted in here. It's, it's hard to select it. And we're going to get to that and how to, how to, how to do that. Um, but it's important to understand a little bit about scale factor and annotation, um, text sizes and such. So, and scale factors for that matter. So here now in a metric environment, we have a ratio, if you will, a one to one, a one to two, a one to five, a one to 10. So as you see, as you go through these, one to one, one to 10, You'll notice as you increase or decrease the ratio, your aspect ratio, you'll see that the text sizes will uh, react accordingly. And I'll tell you why. Because if you have eighth inch text and you want to draw a, a drawing uh, eighth inch equals a foot, the text has to be 12 inches. Revit doesn't need to do that. <laughs> Revit will make those adjustments accordingly. You don't need to create annotative text when it's already created. It, it will size itself based on a scale factor, inversely or directly proportional to the change. So at eighth inch scale, the scale factor is 96. So basically, um, it'll be 196 times the size of the paper, <laughs> uh, inversely, the reciprocal of 196. It'll be 196 XP, and that's where Windows XP comes from. It'll be 196 of the paper size. That's just the mathematics behind it. So as you can see, you can see them a little better now. You can see them a little better, but that's still a little, a little small. See the difference between 100 and 200. It's pretty substantial. Okay, so now, well now we can see them. Other things we could have done to make it a little more clear. Uh, clear. Not, a, not as much of a busy drawing as it was. Drawings get busy. That's the thing about drawings. I've had bosses critiqued me, engineering manager. This sucks in red pen, too busy. And that was all they said. This sucks, too busy. Now that's, that's about as much time as they spent on correcting my drawings. They spilled blood all over my drawings, all along the course of my career. That's the only way you learn, by persistence. You have to persevere the abuse from your lack of expertise. 
Or you can blame it on everyone else. It's the engineer's fault. Engineers and architects don't know anything. We don't know anything. And I'm neither, just to let you know. I'm not a licensed engineer, nor am I a licensed architect. But I aspire to be here in Bayonne, minding my own business. And every once in a while, heading into the, heading into the garden. All right, so I like to work between 33rd and 34th in Midtown. Or downtown. Uh, in any event, well, I see I'm going over on a tangent. I gotta get back to work. I wish this plague would cull the herd faster and let's just get it over with already. I heard coffins are uh, in high demand. All right, so um, that's what we did. We, we were able to copy it. Now, we can change the names of these elevations. So it says rename level 3 to level 2B. So if you go to level 3, I'll zoom in a little bit with the mouse wheel. You double-click on that, and you can sit there, and you can actually change this to uh, level 2B. And we'll do that. Level 2B. Enter. Would you like to rename corresponding views? Absolutely. And again, it does say you can change the names and elevations of levels by selecting a level and then clicking the name or the elevation value. Rename level 3 to level 2B, level 4 to level 3, and level 5 to, to roof. If you're prompted to rename the corresponding views, click yes. So now let's go up to um, level 4 and name it to level 3. Let's go up to level five and, and change it to the level roof. Let's put caps lock on. Anyway, it's a good font. I'm not going to argue with it. Um, so anyway, that's what the instructions are telling us to do. And if you're following along at home, you'll be able to pick this up. It isn't that difficult. It gets um, levels of expertise are difficult, uh, but just inspire you maybe a little bit. Man, I, I, I quit high school. I quit high school. I got my GED. My sister was instrumental in getting my GED. I went back to Lincoln Tech, Jersey City State. I, I was digging ditches in a hole with a shovel when I was a kid, lifting cinder blocks. Lowest scale on the uh, organized labor um, scale. Uh, lots of people are over scale in that industry. Lots are on the scale. In any event, Back then, I was making like $18 an hour. That was a lot of money back then when I was a kid. $18 an hour at you know, 18, 19, 20 years old is a lot of money. In any event, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. I'll just let you know that too. In any event, um, again, I was using jackhammers upside down in Exxon Bayway refinery on a strap, getting the gunite out of the, the reactor of a petroleum refinery. I don't have much longer to live. A lot of MSDS sheets uh, they should have given me. In any event, um, I've been around the block to a certain extent. I don't profess to be an expert in anything, um, but I do profess to have the patience of a saint. <laughs> I've been through the ringer. So we rename the corresponding views, and as you can tell in the project browser, indeed, they all kept that bidirectional associativity, um, and we don't have to do it manually. I'm not going to even think about Project Navigator or Nord Academy P, but it's much better than that. So, as we stated previously, plan views are not created for levels that are copied or arrayed. This gives you the flexibility to quickly generate levels for taller buildings without all the associated views that may increase your project file size unnecessarily. Although this, although this workflow may be beneficial for you in early design phases, what do you do when you need all those floor plans and ceiling plans for that high-rise design. If you want to convert a level that doesn't have a view to one that does, find the Create panel on the View tab and then select the Plan Views flyout and then the Floor Plan command. This opens a dialog box showing the next figure that I'm going to show you and, and you can select among all the levels without corresponding views in your project. Only the levels you copied in the previous exercise are listed in the dialog box. Well, what that means is that um, this is a very powerful tool. So if you go to the view ribbon, to the plan views, and you go to the floor plan, you'll notice that you can create a new floor plan. Now, what it's saying is, um, and we're not going to get into this just yet because there are other things that we could do. We could create different types of floor plans. But right now it's saying that select one or more levels for which you, would, you want to create um, 
new views and saying level three and roof, right? Because the first three levels we had um, don't appear in this uh, dialog box as of yet because do not duplicate existing views is checked. If I uncheck that, you'll notice that now all the views are here. So we can actually duplicate views. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to leave these two views that haven't been assigned a floor plan. And we'll assign them a floor plan. Because right now, if you look, level three, because we copied it, it doesn't have a corresponding floor plan view, nor does the roof. Look in the project browser, right? New floor plan. You don't see level three of the roof here in any of these uh, views. So if you, I believe, if you hold down control and select both of them, you'll create both of them at once as opposed to selecting them individually. So that's what that paragraph just said. You can also use this command to create duplicate views of existing levels. Clear the Do Not Duplicate Existing Views option at the bottom of the dialog box to see all the levels in your project. Select the roof level and click OK. A floor plan will be created for the roof level, and that floor plan will be opened. It's important to note that every